Hello and welcome to Cotswood Fireworks demonstration of audio with the FireTech firing system. Now there's been a lot of uh, talk on the forums recently about using audio with FireTech and in particular questions about timecode. Uh, to me, I mean I'll be honest now, timecode has been, uh, how should we say, a dark art. I've steered away from it because I thought it was really, really complicated. Uh, in fact, actually, it's really easy to use, and um, once you've got your um, head around working out that your music goes down one channel of your uh, stereo feed and your time code goes down the other channel of your music feed, uh, that's pretty much all you need to do. Uh, obviously, what you have to do is put the music to the PA system to fire out to the crowd, and you put the time code. Um, audio feed to your fire, fire tech firing box so that it knows what it's doing um, or if actually the time code isn't telling the fire tech what to do the time code is just telling the fire tech what time it's at and that's what time code is really all about if we step back a bit and we look at a, um, a typical firing system let's just say for example we have a laptop uh, which is going to play the music and the laptop is also going to um, tell the firing system when to start and the firing system whatever one it is has its own internal clocks inside its hardware to keep itself within time you know plus or minus a thousandth of a second or whatever kind of accuracy it has and uh, you you put your fireworks together, you load your music, you load your script into your modules and um, you tell the laptop to start the display at which point the laptop starts playing the music and the firing system now starts firing the fireworks to the script. What could happen is the laptop's internal clock may be running slightly faster or slightly slower than the internal clocks of your firing system. So the music, very, very slightly, may be playing faster or slower than the modules of firing the fireworks. So after five minutes of the display, you may suddenly find that, that's slightly noticeable, my music's half a second behind the fireworks, and after 10 minutes, it's now a second behind the fireworks. Um, this is a big exaggeration, but it can, can happen. It's uh, Computers and laptops and desktops or whatever you're using don't have very good clocks, not for telling the time. Um, I use it as an example. Uh, for all I know, you might be using an iPhone to play the music, and that too may have a, a problem with playing at speed, at uh, the right speed, um, in comparison to the internal clocks that are being used by the firing system. So things can get out of sync over a period of time, sometimes quite quickly or not quickly at all. I mean, I'm using this as a bad example, or shall we say an example of it, it, that's exaggerated. You might find after 10 minutes of playing that your music is only 100 milliseconds out of out of sync, which is a tenth of a second, and you, you will see the difference. The audience may not see the difference, but you know, if you want to uh, uh, make sure the music is perfectly in time, then the method to use is time code. The reason is that time code is not only playing the music but it's sending this audio signal down to the firing system which is a string of beeps. It's like listening to a fax machine. If you ever pick up a phone and you hear a fax whistling at you, that's similar to what a time code is doing. Now the audio box, let's say it is a laptop, and let's say the laptop has a problem with keeping, keeping in time, so it's playing the audio and it's losing a second every five minutes, so in fact your audio is playing very slightly out of time by a second over five minutes. This no longer matters about the firing system. The firing system is listening to the time code, and the time code is saying, fire now, fire now, fire now, fire now. That's the kind of signal it's getting. But because the audio signal from the chime code is generated by the same piece of hardware that's generating the audio going to the music system or the sound system to play the music to the outside world, they're both in time, albeit they're both playing a second behind after five minutes. It doesn't matter. The time code is playing at the same speed as the audio. So that's one of the reasons why time code is useful when you start playing 
uh, fireworks to music in extremely, I should say, long duration shows. And it's not uncommon to do a 30 minute display to music for bonfire night in the UK. What you want is your music to finish at the same time as the fireworks at the end of 30 minutes. One way of doing that is to use timecode. Right, I've waffled on for a good few minutes. What we need to do now is actually create a timecode file, or should we say a music track with timecode. So on the screen we've got, um, what's this, Adobe Audition, it's just a music editing piece of software. And uh, I'm doing this right off the cuff, so I haven't even practiced this, so it's very likely this is going to go wrong, but uh, let's give it a go. First of all, we need some music in the display so um, off the off the screen I'm just going to create you actually gonna yeah there we go I'll move this off the screen you don't really need to see all this and uh, we will let's go find some music shall we we're not going to use all of it we're just going to put little bits together and um, and uh, squeeze it in and out and uh, just create create some some uh, yeah some awful music I suspect but uh, Music, music, right, here we go. Oh, it's empty folder. That's a good start, isn't it? Right. Oh, we have a mix down file. We'll just take one of these. It doesn't really matter what it is. And we'll just drag it onto the timeline. And let's just play just to see what we have. Uh, it looks like there's a two second gap at the beginning. So we'll drag that in there and hit play. Not sure if you're hearing that, but um, looks like a bit of uh, take that. So we can start that and we'll shrink this down because we don't need a full four minutes. Let's just bring that down to 40 seconds of boring take that. And uh, oops, double screen. As I told you, we're doing this off the cuff. It's the best way. Let's go and get another piece of music. We don't really need all of it, but. Uh, um, Oh, here we go. Stanford had some music. We did quite a lot in here. And um, oh, I do like this little bird track. Let's drag that across and tie that in at the end of that piece. Where's my scroll bar gone? Over there. Don't need all of it. And um, play. Put that over there. There we go. Messy editing, but we've now got two minutes of music, two different tracks, just for just for argument's sake. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Annie Lennox. Right, let's stop that. So we made our track, however long it is. Next thing to do is obviously to mix that track down. So we X. So we're going to save just in case we get a crash. Located outside, yes, of course we do. We want to copy them both into the same folder just to be on the safe side. And looks like we've got a visitor. Who's that? Hello. My daughter's arrived, excuse me. I'll just turn the audio off while I have a quick chat. Oh, there we go young daughter problems with boys and now that's sorted that's out of the way all right we don't need that anymore right so okay let's do a multi-track mix down we can do the uh, entire session uh, we're exporting a WAV file and uh, we're going to put that in a different area which is our time code test there you go, one time code with mix down file and export. Nice and fast. Right. And let's just grab that back into the program so you can see what it can do. So back to the one time code test and drag the file onto the bar. All right. Uh, just to give you an idea, if I double click on our time code mix down, that's what it looks like, and it is a combination of the two files we just created, starting with boring take that. Here's take that, and if we take that to the end, end of take that, start of Annie Lennox. There we go, one file. I'll just stop there. Now, the file, as you see, has a left 
yep, left because it's got left on the end, a left track and a right track. So it is a stereo audio file. No good for us because timecode needs to use one of those channels, either the left or the right. So at this moment, I don't know which one it's going to use. I've never done timecode before. This is my first attempt. So uh, we've got the file. We no longer need it here. We'll take that program down for a moment. I have a FireTech shortcut uh, with some interesting software. New FireTech software, which has some computer software and hopefully an audio mix down file not there as you see oh, audio mixer I suspect it's that one run it up yes merge stereo to mono and add SMTP as the left channel there you go you can actually pick which channel you are going to create the SMTP timecode on uh, open the WAV file that we created. Well, that was in one of these dodgy directories here. That's our mix down file. That's how fast it was. That is fast. That's done. And we can close that down. In fact, what it does is you see it creates the file and it adds SMPT, ESMP, whatever that stands for, something timecode, on the end of the WAV file name. So let's get audition back and we'll just drag that across so we can look at the file we don't need that anymore so here we go right there we go i've now opened the new audio file with the smtp timecode you can see the left channel now has a heck of a lot more music on it uh, or sound noise on it should we say and the right channel is actually a combination of the original left and right audio channels we're going to play this now it's going to sound awful but uh, it give you an idea what um, a mix of audio and timecode sounds like together. You may just have been able to hear the um, audio underneath. Uh, we can probably, in a way, mute this somehow. And there's uh, probably where's the stereo, left, right stereo volumes just gives you to know I don't use this program enough to actually mute stereo left and right that might do it let's try that again so there we are turn it off the entire track is on the right channel time code I'm gonna unmute it is on the left channel mute the right unmute the left now to you and me, that sounds pretty awful, but to a computer, or should we say a firing system that's listening for time code, that is everything it needs. It's a signal that's basically saying start, stop, start, start, stop, 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 or whatever. It's, it's effectively giving you an exact perfect time signal. That's a terrible way of describing it, is it? It's like giving you a, a sound wave that never changes its pitch. It's perfectly in time or should we say in time to the player that's playing it. So if the player itself is playing 10 seconds slow, then the time code will play 10 seconds slow. But that means the music is playing 10 seconds slow, so the firing system will play and fire at the same speed as the music. Perfect. It means the music might sound slow to the audience, but at least the fireworks are going to be in time to it. Same as if the firework, the music was playing slightly fast, the time code will play to the fireworks uh, uh, firing system slightly fast as well. So the firing system will stay in time because it is listening to the time code, not to its internal clock. Uh, that's enough for the moment. I've probably confused the hell out of everyone. Here we are. That was how easy it is to create your time code file. What of course you now need to do is build a piece of hardware, a um, a three and a half mil cable, uh, audio cable that has a left channel going out and a right channel going out. And in this case, you put the right channel to your PA system and your left channel to your FireTech firing module. We will try and make a video in the future where we actually build the cable because I haven't built it yet and I don't have the spare jacks around to um, to chop one in pieces and, and wire one up quickly and uh, we'll actually show timecode playing to the um, firing system and the ability to the fact that when you pause the music the fireworks stop 
uh, or should we say the firing system stops firing and when you start the music again it starts firing where it left off uh, which is perfect and um, yeah exactly what time code does exactly what you need to do hope i haven't confused anyone uh this was just a very quick rough copy uh just a quick idea uh showing you that it's actually really simple to create a time code the software we used is free um you get it for free when you buy firetech and um likewise the firework editing software that lorian uses is also free uh thank you very much and uh this is yeah goodbye from Cosmo fireworks and goodbye from firetech now, how do we stop this <laughs> video recording? Because this is uh, it's uh, all new. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. All right. Shh.